Hey everyone, done here again. Last time I made a monster with a video, I actually told you guys that I was going to make videos going into detail on weapons in the series. I won't be going into stuff like combo lists, say like circle, triangle, hold down R2 and push circle again to charge, blah, 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 stuff like that. Uh, my reasons for this is because there's a lot of different generations with a few different combos. There's also weapon arts that I don't know much about. I don't want to give my opinions or my thoughts on stuff I don't know about. So instead, I'm going to go into detail on strategies and methods on how to use the weapons in little details here and there. And kind of tips on what to do and what not to do with the weapons. So the first weapon I wanted to talk about was the flagship weapon in Monster Hunter. This is the weapon that most people are familiar with. It's the weapon you see a lot in like covers and stuff like that. It is the Greatsword. The greatsword is a mid-range giant sword. Now, keep in mind when I say mid-range, I'm talking about a class of weapon that isn't the dual sword or sword and shield, which I consider those guys uh, to be the close range weapons. So I'm considering the greatsword to be a mid-range weapon because of how big it is, the same as the long sword, basically. It is one of the hardest hitting weapons due to its multiple charge attacks. So, the charge attacks kind of depend on the generation you're in, so stuff like, say, Monster of the World has like four, I believe, charge attacks, and stuff like Portable Third has two, and stuff like Freedom Unite has one. The Greatsword also has a concussive attack, so this applies confusion to the monster if you hit him in the, in the head. As you see, this little yellow icon pops up when you smack the monster in the side of the head with the sword, knock someone into the confusion, confused state. But it takes a long time with the broadsword. I've, I usually do this to smaller animals. It's kind of a really hard thing to hit someone with when it's a big monster. It could be done, especially if you have a hammer helping you out too. But it's pretty rare. One of the most important need to know things about the greatsword is that it's super, super slow. So having an understanding of the monster you are fighting helps a lot. So before going into any fight that you don't know about it. So if you go into, say, the first time you're ever fighting a Rathleos or a Raytheon, like I'm doing in the footage right now, you should take a moment to just look at them and watch their movements. Granted, you can say this for pretty much all the weapons in Monster Hunter, but solar weapons need more to work with just because of how slow they are. So the Greatsword, it definitely benefits from just watching the monster for a little bit before uh, attacking them and, you know, you could get hit or you could die for all you know if you fuck up with this. Okay, so a good idea is to wait and look for openings in its attack pattern. So for example, the Rathleo shoots a fireball, it leads itself open for you to attack its tail or its head, its wings, its feet. It's got a good couple of seconds of just easy hits you can get in there. Especially with the broadsword, you can get a full charge out if you're careful. But what the Greatsword loses in its speed, it benefits a lot from single hit attacks. So, like I said before, its charge attacks are really powerful. It's got three charge attacks. Well, three levels of charge for a charge attack. That's what I'm trying to say. The final charge attack is a little weird. You have to release it at the right time. Well, depending on the generation, of course. But when you see this little uh, fiery flick, you gotta let it go. Or else you will do an overcharge. And it will go back to a level two charge. So you have to be very careful on how you use these charge attacks. Because if you get a full level three charge on a monster's head, it could be really beneficial and get, get a lot of damage out in a short amount of time. So be careful. And again, remember, you need to know your monster when using a broadsword. Or else you could, I keep calling it a broadsword. And remember, you need to know your monster when using the greatsword. It's a good idea to memorize a lot of attack patterns for your charge attacks. And you gotta be very careful. You should also know that some charge attacks, say like the second charge attack, kind of leaves you open for a hit. So as the charge attack you're seeing in front of you right now, it actually has decent safety to it. So when you charge, you get a full charge out, you hit you hit them, you can roll right out of it and you're okay. However, the second charge, it is not so easy. It smashes down and you're stuck there for a couple seconds. You, do, you can roll out of it later on, but it still opens you for a really easy hit. So keep that in mind when you're using that attack. Also, the Greatsword is, in my opinion, the best weapon to cut off tails with in the game. So getting a full level 3 charge off on a tail is really, really good. You have to be careful about this though, because again, the monsters could be faster and you could get slapped out of the way. So I would use these moments very sparingly. 
my advice to anyone who's starting the game is go for the monster's legs, knock it over, and then get a level 3 charge off on its tail, and then get out of there. It, keep doing this over and over until the tail comes right off. There are also times in Monster Hunter where certain monsters have this thing where they'll just keep turning in a circle. And that's when they're trying to hit you with their tail, so Rathalios and Raytheon do this a lot. In other Monster Hunter games, like Freedom United, a lot of them do this. In Portable 3rd, I am pretty sure it only like made two or three monsters do this. In World, it seems like there's a couple? I can't really tell, because again, the game's not out yet. But for as far as I can tell, the Rathalios and Raytheon still kind of do this too. But when you're in between their legs, you can do your swing across attack and your backswing attack over and over and over and over again. And this is some really easy damage you can get off on the monsters. I would also highly recommend being very careful with this because some monsters when they'll just start a running attack could hit you. So I'd say hit them a couple times and roll out of there and just be very safe about this. Because it's good damage, but you could get killed. The Great Sword also has a block. I would not recommend depending on it too much because it doesn't block a huge amount of damage. Like, it does block damage, but it doesn't block as much as, say, a, sword, a shield from the gun lance or the normal lance. It also takes a fuck ton of stamina and brings on your sharpness quite a lot. So I recommend focusing on trying to dodge attacks more than block them. Uh, I personally do block a lot, but it's not always a good idea because you can get stuck in a really bad position. Because you can also get a huge knockback when you, say, get hit by an attack. So, if you're fighting, say, Rathios and it hits you with a fireball, it could put you into a corner and just corner fuck you till you die. So, be very, very careful with this. And finally, I want to talk about the Greatsword's movement, or lack thereof. When you have your greatsword out, you move very, very slowly. And I've seen so many noob players do this a lot. And it's not necessarily your fault, it's just that you need to learn to not do this. And I did this too when I first started playing with the greatsword, and I saw my brother do this a couple times when he was using the greatsword too. When you have your sword out, don't just keep rolling till you get too close to the monster. Unless you're trying to avoid damage, say someone's shooting a fireball and you have your sword out, just roll out of there instead of putting your weapon away. Or say blocking but don't just roll to get to position if you have the option of either rolling or putting your weapon away and moving out of uh out of certain situations or moving towards a monster always put your weapon away then walk towards the monster because you're conserving stamina and it's just faster honestly at least in my opinion it is um there are certain situations where rolling is better but it's just a good idea to put your weapon away. Don't walk, don't spend the entire fight with your weapon out, is what I'm trying to say. Because I see this a lot. Learn to put your, learn the times where you can put your weapon away and when to have your weapon out. So that's my video today. Um, I could have made this video a little longer and get more details in there, but these details are more depending on the generation you're playing. And I wanted to make this video as broad as possible because all these strategies could be used in pretty much, as far as I can tell, all the Monster of the Games. And I didn't want to make a video going into one specific game, you know what I mean? And that's why I stayed away from combos and certain things you could do in individual games. So if this seems a little bit of a short video or if it seems a little too broad, let me know in the comments. I do plan on making a full tutorial guide for Monster the World when it comes out. and Or if there's a demo that comes out, I, oh please, oh, I'd be so happy if a demo came out on these attacks. And combos. I, I'll definitely get on that if there is one. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought of this video. If you want to see more stuff like this, let me know in the comments. If you don't want to see more stuff like this, also let me know in the comments or just dislike the video. It's a good, easy way for me to know. And I'll see you guys next video. See you guys. Bye!